And now I present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay, <clears throat> we are here, we are back. The weeks fly by very quickly, and this happens to be a very special week. It happens to be Memorial Day weekend 2015. Happy Memorial Day weekend, uh, America, America, or America, for those normal, intelligent people out there. Uh, America, for all the teabagger, teabagger, brain cell deficient numbskulls ha most of all have a safe memorial day weekend have your barbecues uh drink responsibly don't drink and drive uh click it or ticket <laughs> i don't want to <laughs> give you a lecture on what you should do you, you already know what you should be doing but happy memorial day weekend this is james p madonna of mega life 21 your host this happens to be uncensored, hard-hitting truth. We're coming to you uh, live and recorded uh, from the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey. And I would like to introduce my illustrious co-host and mentor, the one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, sir? I'm good, waiting for the holiday. Right. Memorial Day weekend. I would like to have a quick um moment of silence out of respect for all the um men and women who have uh sacrificed their lives either for uh for, for the united states of america either for fighting uh for our freedom or dying unfortunately and sadly for war profiteering and big oil but nevertheless, those men and women who have died in, uh, since 1776, let's have a moment of silence. Okay. Um, where can I start? I don't have much to say except uh, to kind of like, you know, ad lib, rehash the week. Uh, I, I, I thought it was extremely comical when uh, uh, Krispy Kreme Crisco Chris Christie uh, said that he uh, either is giving up the presidential race or might in 2016 because New Jerseyans do not want to let him go as governor. They, they can't, we just can't do without him over here. We want him back. I thought that was very funny. We love him. And they love him. We hey, love what can I, what can we say? Yeah, they love him. Uh, you know what? He's not only delusional, but the reason why he, the real reason why he would give up the presidential race in 2016 is because he is simply stuck at the back of the Republican clown bus. Mm -hmm. He's stuck in the back of the bus. That's the only reason why he of would course. quit. You know. It's uh, an ego saving thing. That's what it is. Well, it's, it's always about ego. Okay. Everything is big and bold with uh, Chris Christie in, in every way. Uh, Chris Christie is known uh, in Italian American slang as a cavone, capital C A V O N E, a crude, obnoxious, uh, boisterous uh, uh, person without class, without mm. manners, without couth. Mm. And that's exactly what Chris Christie is. Now, I posted some. I guess it was meant to be a, a private get-together, but I posted a t the tirade uh, on the media by Chris Christie using some foul language. Yeah, but I didn't see what it was for. It was an audio recording. Yeah, it was an audio, re audio recording. He pretty much is... Um, he's not happy about how the media is portraying uh, him. Okay. 
in a negative light and he, he pretty much goes off on them uh, hey man the proof is in the pudding no pun intended with Chris Christie I'm sure he loves pudding but the proof is in the pudding you know <clears throat> You're known by your fruits, right? The tree, That's correct. the quality of the tree is known by its fruits. You know what? And 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 like I said, he he is the perfect example of a cavon. Well, and then he protects his cavoniness as if it were proper. So he invests yeah. all of his ego in that crap. Heaven forbid. He Chris, thinks he's doing nothing wrong. Heaven forbid Chris Christie should ever say, I'm wrong and I apologize. See, that's my point. Heaven forbid. That's my point. But, you know, a lot of Republicans, a lot of conservatives are Calvones. But Chris Christie takes the cake, no pun intended. Hey, where's my levity belts? No pun intended. Takes the cake. No, he does take the cake. Literally, he takes the cake. That's right. And figuratively. Uh, you know, and then it affects his figure. <laughs> another good one. Another good one, Reverend Bill. Uh, but, you know, look, Republicans have a habit of either blaming the black man in the White House, President Obama, or gays. Everything is the fault of gays or the black man in the White House, and um, a a right-wing religious nut in the state of Florida was discussing how the state of Florida is failing at eradicating the uh, the uh, uh, Burmese python population in South Florida. It, it is an invasive species, uh, doesn't belong there, and it's failing because God is preventing the Burmese python from disappearing. It is a punishment on uh, Americans today by God. That's why the Burmese pythons are not disappearing. And because he said the python is a serpent. This was, the serpent uh, is, is a symbol of Satan. But this was one of those uh, this pastors. This gentleman called himself a Christian? Called himself a, a pastor. A minister, a pastor. Was he a Christian? Of uh, the Christian faith? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, then he's absolutely wrong. Because the only ones who are being meted out any kind of punishment today are those first fruits, the 144,000, the Israelites. I'm talking about the whole tri uh, uh, tribes, the 12 tribes, not just that one over there in the Middle East, Judah. Okay, that's the only one seeking punishment. Or then why would God have to create a white throne judgment if he were judging now Right. the vast majority of humans, which he's not? Well, it seems so the like, pastor's wrong. It seems like the right wing pastors in the United States are very antsy about putting the blame and judging and punishing. They're they're They they're, love to punish. They're on a tirade of punishment. That's correct. And they blame the wrong people that need punishing. Yeah, and but, but what happens is when they do something wrong and need punishment they are forgiven very quickly god forgave me god forgave me hey all the all the very successful right-wing evangelists evangelical evangelists i never i've never seen anything in the news about them helping the poor with all the money they get so they're supposed to set examples for christianity right they're they're evangelists they're their pastors, ministers, whatever you want to call them, they're supposed to represent the God of the Bible mm. in an accurate manner. Mm. But they're not helping the poor with their money, but they sure are spending it on expensive cars and mansions to live in. Because they've made a business out of religion. It's okay, a, it's a front Business. with the conservatives. God, God, the Bible, Christianity is used as a front. front. That's right. 
because that way they pretend that they have the moral high ground. You know, like if a woman, if a, if a woman owned a uh, a nail salon, and Ooh. in the back she had an illegal massage parlor, a bra brothel, but the 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 nail salon would be considered a front. Yes. Yes. A front. Yeah. And um, and then in the back they will take care of your front. <laughs> Boy, we're on a roll this Memorial Day weekend. 2015, oh I guarantee. Um, oh boy. Now, it, I, I just thought, I mean, uh, the first thing I mentioned was the Chris Christie delusional statement, which is hilarious. But I'm, always, I'm reading, I mean, I read anything coming from the right wing and any, and any of the, uh, the members of the Republican clown bus is not only asinine and stupid, and utterly preposterous, but also very funny, but also very serious, because That's there, there are people who will still vote for them in America, America, and the people that vote for them usually do not have a pot to piss in, and when they vote for the Republican in states like Kentucky, or Mississippi, whatever, they are not voting for someone who has their best interest. And it is totally illogical for them to vote for a Republican. But it is passion. You see, you are trying to apply logic to passion. Passion. It doesn't work. Passion. That's correct. They're using uh, emotion as a That's way of correct. getting them to vote. So instead of using the emotion based on fact that the people are poor, and they're still poor, and they're still living day to day, you know, they're often without Obamacare or Medicaid. Some of these red states, they refuse Obamacare and Medicaid. That's correct. And these people are, are scraping the bottom of the barrel. Mm -hmm. And they still are voting Republican based on an unproven, unchristian cult that they follow Bingo. as their religion. Bingo! But there's a there's a there's a silver lining on on one of the clouds. Uh, one of the one? one of the cumulus clouds, and that silver lining is that if Americans in general, the mainstream population would understand the importance of losing their voter apathy and making sure they do vote, then the normal people, which make up the bulk of mainstream America, would Win the elections. would most likely show up at the polls mm -hmm. and not vote for a Republican and vote for the Democratic mm -hmm. candidate and you wouldn't have uh, a, a Republican-controlled House of Representatives Correct. with the ugly, turtle-faced Mitch McConnell to look at. Every time you log into your computer, you wouldn't have to see his ugly face. You wouldn't have to see John Boner Boehner's orange head crying, tears of orange juice. Well, there oh. used to be what you call the New Deal, New Deal coalition. Yeah. And that kept the Democrats in, and that kept the... Uh, middle class up there and that kept the uh, wages up and the uh, uh, taxes on the rich and etc. That was a coalition but the Republicans and the conservatives destroyed that and they continue to destroy yeah. the New Deal. Well the Republicans are responsible for the Citizens United bullshit. That's correct. Keep keeping money and corruption in politics. More money in corruption. More money in, in, in right. Exactly. And it was already there. And uh, anything that's pro-elitist and pro-rich and anti-poor, because they sure love to to uh, prosecute, not prosecute, persecute, persecute. And, bla and blame the they poor. They disdain the poor. It says it right there in the Bible. I told that off. The poor are in their sights. Before I came here. I, I, I rebuttaled some teabagger that was going on and on about the 
the poor person's mentality. The, uh -huh. men the mentality of the poor is How what we never is the what keeps them poor. Yes. Well, why don't we ever get the mentality of the rich? Well, what the did that one jerk off say uh, the, the other day on a Facebook thing about the poor? Uh, they, they all they want to oh Ben Stein that idiot Fuck all it. they want to do is get high. Well, what about the rich guys yeah, that want to get high? High or drunk? Hey, the rich can afford a lot more uh, uh, cocaine, ecstasy, a uh, freaking crack. Yeah, but you don't hear uh, you don't hear. Well, all them rich they don't deserve their tax breaks because they all just want to get high. Why don't we ever hear something like that? Well, Ben Stein was... Ben Stein is an idiot. In a roundabout, not in a roundabout way, in an obvious way, was making an excuse why he should not help the poor. Yes, that's what they do. That's, what, that's what it was. Limbaugh does it the same, and they all do it. You know, like, uh, or, like uh, a guy I know from Australia says, uh, well, yeah, you know, the Aborigines are always crying and complaining about everything, and they, and they get social services. We... We give them welfare, but they turn around and buy liquor with it and get drunk. So well, what does that mean? That's the point. The Don't point, help them? The point is, when you give something to someone, it's a gift. It's now theirs. They can do whatever the hell they want with it. If somebody, you have no control over If somebody anymore. gives you a gift card from... Um, from Walmart. From... All right. Walgreens. Uh, all right, let's just say Walgreens. Yeah. What are they going to do? They're going to tell you what you what you what you could buy for yourself and well, what you can't. Well, doesn't those Republicans want to do that? As far as SNAP is concerned, yeah. well, yeah. we don't want them buying carbohydrates and stuff. We don't want. Who the them. hell are you to tell what the hell they can buy with their SNAP? They don't want Republicans. Don't want the poor to with their food stamps to buy steak. Seafood, right? Um, coal cuts is a big luxury. Now, uh, uh, some assholes in Wisconsin, I think, says potatoes are too good for the poor. Yes, that, that potatoes yeah. are 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 like peasant food. It's a, potatoes are amongst the cheapest items in any market. They don't want potatoes are too good for the poor. I mean, what's next? You might as well just say no more snap. Well, Do away what, with all snap. That's the ultimate, uh, you know, that's the ulterior motive. Because if, 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 you, if you take away the poor's steak and seafood and cold cuts and potatoes and all this stuff, pretty soon it's going to be no food stamps at all. Well, that's what they want. That's what they want. And their but, excuse is, oh, the poor gets high and but drunk But there's all a time. bigger problem involved here. Mm hmm And it's hypocrisy at its most glaring. Yes, sir. The government doesn't tell you what the fuck to do, ever. I what, they, I never we want them to mandate vaccines? You want them to mandate uh, 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 GMOs? That's so, no. they can, that's so they can kill us off. Well, that's the, yeah, but that's the point. Genes the government, slow the genocide. government does not tell you what to do, I ever. Ne I've never seen any evidence of the United States government oppressing me and telling me what to do. I haven't seen, I, I, I haven't even seen Americans' guns being taken away from them by Barack Obama. I haven't seen well, that that's, either. That's garbage, but I'm saying, the, you never let the government tell you what to do. Ever. Nobody intrudes in my life. Well, you don't think so, but they do. Well, There's yeah. many things. Yeah, but do. as far as the vaccines go, that's just, you know, uh, well, we all know the FDA and the USDA is in bed with Big Pharma. And the CDC. Right. It's and, Mon all. and Monsanto. Hey, Hillary Clinton, Democrat, the Billerys, they're in bed with Monsanto. And this is a, this is a big problem I have with Hillary Clinton. Uh, I, I am publicly, so far, because he's, he's a wonderful guy and he's a good egg. So far, I am publicly endorsing Senator Bernie Sanders. Now, what I was going to say, what I was talking to you offline about, is that worst case scenario, okay, worst case scenario, if the Democratic Party, uh, because of corporatism, decides to nominate, let's say, Hillary Clinton, 
even if Bernie Sanders kicks Hillary Clinton's ass in all the debates, which he can, Bernie Sanders will become so well known, such a household word, that and all the the passion that he will stir up in America, even if Hillary gets the nomination, Bernie can still run as an independent. He can't. He, he can. He can but or can't. Independence. The last. No, but you're not. You're not following what I'm saying. The him being him running for the for the Democratic nomination will give him lots of face time. And the, the country will, will get to votes. know him. Huh? It will give him votes. As I was trying to say, the best independent candidate of all time in America was Ross Perot. And he only got 19% of the vote. Yeah, because he came out with an asinine statement about his daughter's matter. wedding. Whatever. No, no. The daughter's wedding, he quit. Because they threatened problems at the wedding. He was threatened. But that's not my point. Don't get off the issue. Mm -hmm. The issue is independence don't make it. They don't make it in America. Unless it's a two party system. Unless you're Jesse Ventura Period. running for governor of Minnesota. That's small potatoes. Yeah, but yeah, but uh, uh, but the America will see Bernie's getting invited everywhere. To be interviewed, Bernie's getting the FaceTime. Yeah, and yeah. it hasn't even. But he needs the vote, and they come from either Democrats or Republicans. It haven't even. Period. Is just, you see, you grew up with the Democratic Party and good old FDR. You know what I mean? I, I you, I know you're partial to the Democratic Party because of FDR, Truman, whatever. What does that have to do with what I said? The two-party system is totally shot, kaput, corrupt. But that's what's that's what's in business in this country. Fuck business. What's in business? System. Things have to be toppled. And Bernie Sanders toppled. Yeah, but it ain't done yet. Bernie Sanders getting the FaceTime is just what this country, the blood transfusion that this country needs. And that's why he's running as a Democrat. Right. Well, but if the Democratic but he ain't Party, as an independent, if the because he won't get it. But, he won't make but people will know him well at that time when he runs as an independent. Get it? No, they will I don't know get him it. very well. Because it has never worked. Because you, because you, you never had such a, such a, a, a tough, strong, a tough cookie like Bernie Sanders before. Ralph Nader, in, in when, when he, when he was running uh, with Al Gore and uh, George W. Bush, mm -hmm. he got like two hundred seventy-five thousand votes. That's it. Was Ralph Nader invited to any of the debates? No! Oh, that doesn't help him. Of course it not. Ralph Nader's great, but he he is he was not treated with the respect he deserved by the media. Because he was an independent candidate. Okay? Well, and the media are corporate whores that are just like the two-party system. Corporate In most whores. of your dictators, there is a one-party system. Yeah. His party. His party. Military okay. dictator. Now you go in there and you want to be an independent, what's going to happen? You get thrown in prison. <laughs> well, if let's say that he, that he, he allows... A monarchy. Let's say he allows... He's, he's like a, a decent, monarchy. A decent uh, election. What's going to happen? Why do you keep on playing devil's advocate with the... The status quo and the and the and the top one percent is in control. You have no hope or faith at all in toppling this evil system. Not true at all. What is your, your you're going to wait for Jesus to come back for the second time? That is another one of your perceptions. What is the answer? They have then? nothing. Ah! If Bernie Sanders is not the answer, <laughs> and Hillary Clinton is not the answer, then what is the answer, Doctor Bill? Exactly. Isn't that what we're supposed to be finding out? What is the answer? Oh, I'm waiting. We don't have the answers yet. <laughs> you sound like the Republicans now. We don't have any answers. You know what? Let us sink our teeth they into these answer. readings. Let us commence. because I gotta, have answers. I got to go to the men's room. Hey, Republicans have answers. Get the money in politics and get, just keep putting us in. Steal, steal America's... Um, take away social services. Let the poor die ah, or, beco or become slaves. 
corporate slaves. Just or, keep us in power. Or better yet, stick them into privatized prisons and make them work for free. Including child prisons. They, 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 now have, they now have special privatized child prisons in America where kids are in there. Yeah. You know so, what I mean? with all these problems and everything now, uh, uh, how are you going to topple them? One by one? How do you talk about You them? gotta get behind somebody who is not part of this corrupt two party system. Name that person. Like Mr. Bernie Sanders. He takes money like anybody else. Oh, come on. He What's takes the matter with money you? like ah come on, he takes money like everybody else. Excuse me, I gotta go you to the You can't do nothing uh, until you change the system. Yeah. That's like that song for, was it a disco song? Nothing from nothing leaves nothing. Something from nothing leaves nothing. You gotta have something if you wanna be with me. Bum, bum. Just read the read the article. I'll be right back. No hope, no hope, no hope, no hope. Make That's it, not it, true. It, Where the hell does he come up with these goddamn perceptions? Just because you admit what is real, the reality of situations, doesn't mean you are not, not out there trying to change them or or, 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 or alter them or etc. Where does that come from? Governor Christie on Friday waded into the debate over whether to reauthorize portions of the Patriot Act that authorize surveillance programs, citing his reliance on the law when he prosecuted terror suspects as U.S. Attorney for New Jersey. <coughs> Excuse me. Appearing at the Southern Republican Leadership Conference in Oklahoma City, Christie described opponents of reauthorizing the law as intellectual purists worried about theoretical abuses that haven't occurred. In doing so, he staked out a hawkish position that sets him apart from the two U.S. Senators whom he could face in the GOP presidential primary. Christie, who said he will announce a decision on whether to run next month, was first asked about the issue in New Hampshire this month, after a federal, federal appeals court ruled that once secret national security, security agency program that collects Americans' phone records in bulk is illegal, Christie backed that aspect of the law and urged Congress to extend it. He reiterated that support on Monday in a speech on national defense in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Yeah, or Portsmouth. Where Mouth. he also called for a bigger U.S. military. On each of those occasions, bigger? Christie has noted that he is the only potential or declared Republican can actually use the Patriot Act, noting he prosecuted terrorists in the aftermath of the September 11th, 2001 attacks as U.S. Attorney. What does that have to do with the collection? On Friday, he took it a step further calling the debate in Congress over reauthorizing the law, which expires next month, very dangerous. He speculated that lawmakers who oppose the act would call for congressional hearings if another attack were to occur, not realizing the hypocrisy of their actions. Christie didn't even mention any of the law's opponents by name. But U.S. Senators Rand Paul and Ted Cruz, both of whom are declared presidential candidates, have come out against it. And Paul took the Senate floor for ten and one half hours on Thursday to speak against the bulk collection of phone records under the law. Christie said lawmakers in Washington who are engaging in the debate have no experience dealing with what I've dealt with. I'm the only person 
in this national conversation at the moment who has used the Patriot Act. Very braggadocious of him. Sign off on it and convicted terrorists because of it. Hmm. And I'm telling you, there is responsible ways for us to oversee this and make sure civil liberties aren't violated. Christie also made the issue personal. Hmm. He's often talked about how his wife, Mary Pat, yeah. was at work just blocks away from the World Trade Center when the September 11th attacks occurred. And he's also mentioned that his son Andrew's best friend lost his father that day. A lot of people lost friends and family. But on Friday he also listed other people he knew who were killed. A member of his family's church and a New York City firefighter who was a brother of his son Patrick's kindergarten teacher. I went to the funerals. I lived it. And then I brought the terrorism cases that we brought. The first two terrorism cases that were brought post 9-1-1 were brought out in New Jersey. We convicted those people who were trying to attack our country mm -hmm. and sentenced them to jail for the rest of their lives. I, I heard that before the 9-11 uh, attack, the, um, the hijackers were in living or staying in the uh, Middle Eastern neighborhood of Patterson, New Jersey. They were also in South Hackensack, up in, New uh, Jersey. Up in um, 9 11, um, I'm sorry, uh, Main Street, Main Avenue. Yeah, Hackensack, South Hackensack, New Jersey is near the Teterboro Airport where all the private jets land. Uh, people who want to visit New York City. I believe uh, land there. a couple of them were in the Congress Inn down there. I know the Congress Inn. Yeah. Interesting. Christie said he was able to do that because aggressive law enforcement and strong intelligence laws. The first job of the President of the United States is to protect the homeland. And that's what we need to do. Yeah. Wasn't, Edward Snow said. wasn't Edward Snowden kind of like doing his job to protect the U.S. Constitution? Yes, he was. He exposed it to the people. Yeah. That's to the people. Sounds like a patriotic hero to That's me. That's correct. That's correct. Oh. That's correct. Chris Christie. Gee. What a character. I, I, I predict that he will get an offer. Uh, he will get a time slot on Fox News. He will get his own show. He, he's too much of a character to... Of course, uh, maybe he'll have to dye his hair blonde. No, that's only for the chicks. That's only for the women. Oh, uh, okay. Unless you're that, that Asian girl, that Asian sellout, uh, Michelle Malkin of Hawaii, you know, that yeah, they have Republican. About, they have about uh, three or four uh, brunettes or black hair. Well, there's three um, black men um, in the, in the uh, Republican spotlight, Mr. Carson and then a couple others. You know, they're, they're, they will be considered sellouts to their people by being conservative. How does, how does taking away social services from the poor help them, help the poor? That's what Republicans like that, to say. Well, they're not there to help the poor. That's the problem. That, I keep exposing that every week. They I keep saying that they, what they're supposed to give the poor their two coats. They say the same nonsense week after week after week after week. The same uh, uh, preposterous statements. What the Bible means by giving them the poor your two coats is that you are then making the poor not poor anymore. That's right, helping your fellow. But meager snap and all the other social <laughs> programs just make you scrap 
from week to week. Crumbs. They don't make you not poor anymore. They, they throw you a few crumbs right. every week. You get a few crumbs. Yeah. You are with with social programs the way they're set up by our system. Yeah. Is that your nostrils are just barely above the water level. <laughs> you just have enough nostril to air contact so you can survive. Right. Like Billy Morrow uh, uh, tells me all the time, it's not living what what social services does for people. It's not living. No, it isn't. It's That's just, the point. you're just barely surviving. That's the point. You're not, you don't really have a life, That's per se. Yeah. Look, in America, everybody is supposed to have disposable income. Surplus You're cash. You're not supposed to be looking, I mean, going from week to week, paycheck to paycheck. And never going anywhere. And never going anywhere. You can't go out. You can't go yeah. take a vacation. You can't do anything. You can't do anything. And some Republicans don't even want the poor to have an air conditioner or refrigerator or some some nonsense like that. Of course. You know, they, they don't want you to have anything. And, and it was said by famous Republicans. And God forbid that, you know, even Richard Nixon, for crying out loud, the, uh, determined that uh, there are people in this country that need a, 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 an income. An income! You gotta, have, you gotta have an income in order to spend. This is why I always say the true consumer is the little guy. You put money in the pocket of the little guy, and the economy booms. That's correct. And 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 you know you know who, who's got it straight? Scandinavian countries. Yeah. Even Iceland. They ask. Oh, the, but they say you know Norway has it so great and everything like that. But oh, they'll come up with oh yeah yeah, but they drink a lot. So what? Oh, you know what they say with uh, 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 single payer universal health care and all that, they say, oh, you have to go on a long waiting long, list. Long, I don't yeah, believe that. No, it's not true. A long waiting it's list not true. to see the doctor. And even in Canada, we have a reciprocal relationship with Canada. Let's suppose uh, a, a person needs a procedure in Canada, yes, sir. and they can't maybe do this procedure for a week or so or whatever. They'll come to America and have it done. But that's not because the the uh, system is bad there. You know what I mean? It's because they need to get it done now. So they come here. Yeah, well, well, well uh, me medical treatment should always go according to a priority ba uh, uh, basis. You know, prior priority, like in other words, y if it's life and death, well, you yeah, go to the top hours. of the list. If the surgeon hours, works you on you. In an emergency room. Right, the surgeon you know. works on you first. Yeah. The um, uh, somebody has um, you know a burst appendix. Of course, you need to be attended to immediately. Right. If somebody just has a, a benign tumor or a cyst that has to be removed, that would be at the bottom of the list. Prioritize it. Everything we've talked. Everything we've talked about is all part of our new series, Capitalism in a Conch Shell. This is my deluxe South Pacific conch that is only befitting I bring for Memorial Day weekend, a <laughs> holiday weekend. Capitalism in a Conch Shell. Got that folks? See that conch? Hey, hey. And, 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 and let me get this over with. Okay. Come over here, you little siphon bastard. There is no Trickle down economics, it's all a lie, it was never meant to work. What you have is siphon up to the top 20% economics, siphon up to the fat cats, the devil's economics. This happens to be an aquarium siphon. Siphon up, no trickling down. You'll get pistol down though. Is there a bird even more aggressive and lethal than a hawk? Well, all raptors are, are aggressive, and that's how they survive. They kill to eat. We need a new term to describe the Orwellian madness we are hearing from Governor Christie. 
If this egotistical crackpot were elected president, oh, God. I'd fear he'd be a despot. Oh, yeah. We have serious problems in this country and in New Jersey. We need serious leaders to make gutsy choices on budgets, infrastructure, civil liberties, globalization, and taxes. We have crumbling infrastructure and hungry children, even as we spend trillions to kill people on the other side of the world. With our 800 military bases around the world. Yeah, not to mention all the collateral damage uh, U.S. attacks cause. Well, it was all worth it, according to some of the uh, Republicans today. Yeah. Iraq. What, what, it's Obama's fault. Republicans don't, uh, and rich people, they don't care about the common folk dying or the poor dying, getting killed, even innocent poor. They don't care. They don't care about the troops. And this is Memorial Day weekend. Uh, yes, they don't care about They keep cutting the funding off all the time. And these jerks in these red states don't get it. They still don't get it. Aren't there any uh, veterans from red states that have returned from Afghanistan and Iraq? I'm sure there's plenty. Just to find that the government turned their back on them and the was it wasn't there a recent incident with a VA hospital? VA uh, hospitals in general refusing to go outside the hospital to help this veteran. Oh yeah, that gentlemen, thing, yeah. into the emergency room. Of Call nine one one. Call nine one one and have them bring you into the VA hospital. Yeah, that's how bad it is. That is despicable. That's, that's in, like that's a, insane. That's like in India, where where they'll they'll walk by a dying person. Dying person. In India, there was a. A homeless man, a wino or whatever, being swallowed up by a python and people did nothing. See? That's my point. One of those countries, I think it was India. What has Christie done as governor? <laughs> he gave m millions per year of taxpayers' money to his rich friends. Yes, he did do that. He did do that. He pushed us further into the red. Gave fat contracts to his cronies, intimate rivals, and run his office like a personal fiefdom. Why does Chris Christie keep saying that he balanced the budget in New Jersey? He did not. He keeps There's saying no that in the public. Budget. There's no balance. So budget. he's lying. And he stole money to put to the budget from the pension fund. So he's lying. No shit. And nobody is rebuttaling him in the media. Nobody rebuttals any of these Republicans. Vetoing even the most cursory reforms proposed for the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey shows where his true allegiance lies. Luckily, the ballot is still available for citizens to fight tyranny and greed. Where can I sign a recall petition? I think it's a little late for that, no? Well, you can blame your fellow New Jerseyans for him still being around. No kidding. Because in the first four years Chris Christie was in office, New Jerseyans complained about him left and right. And what did they do? They re-elected him in. Yeah. They turned their back on an outstanding uh, uh, candidate, Barbara Bono, Democrat Barbara Bono. They, even her own fellow Democrats stabbed her in yeah. the back and, and did not support her and went with Christie. Yeah. You, you asked for it, you asked for him, and you got him. Yeah, but the problem is we got him. Isn't that usually what happens See, when when know, somebody else lot, makes our decision? A lot of good people suffer for us. For the, but it, it, here it is: a traditional blue state in the northeastern part of the of America, blue state New Jersey, reelects the evil ogre Chris Christie. Just like Blue State Northern Wisconsin elects and re-elects Scott Walker. I, after, I can't understand it. After recalling him. I can't understand it. I don't understand this. How come people like 
us and our friends can see through all the bullshit, and these other people can't. It's amazing. In New Jersey, there is now a push to uh, get self-serve gas pumping. Oh, gosh. That doesn't save money, by the way. No, it does not save money, and it uh, got a lot of problems with it. But anyway, I want to read this letter All concerning right. that. This is an ill-conceived bill that would benefit only the gas station owners. True. It would result in the loss of jobs. Very true. And a loss of convenience. A communication device for those drivers who want an attendant. How much time and expense would that add to a trip to buy gas? Mm -hmm. Instead of making gas station owners pay wages their employees are entitled to, we're just going to allow the owners to do away with the jobs. Hey, any state I've ever driven through that had uh, self-serve gas stations, self-pumping gas stations, the price of gas was actually higher than it was in New There's Jersey. There's no savings involved whatsoever. So what this is, is greed by big business to lay people off and still keep their gas prices high. Right. Now 48 states do this. Ta-da! There, there you go. Somebody. Greed. More, more money, more profit, more profit. Drivers would have to get out of their car, swipe the card themselves, punch in their personal identification number, and handle a smelly gas nozzle. This is a quality of life issue for gas station attendants and drivers. Be they elderly, disabled, or hale and hearty. I hope the principal opponents, the legislature, will listen to us New Jersey drivers. Absolutely. Absolutely. The article was about a lawsuit brought by a woman who objects to a restriction by, excuse me, on approaching women using a clinic in Englewood, New Jersey. Why on earth does a person who has a particular religious belief think it is her right to force that belief on another person? Uh-huh. Isn't that why the United States opposes ISIS? A person's belief is just that, a belief. People have no right to mandate that someone else follow that belief. That is what is known as freedom of religion. Mm. And why people fled to this country. Are we now to be persecuted by religious bigots who know better? Don't we all have the right to believe what we want, to believe for ourselves, and to govern our own lives without being intimidated and belittled by others who don't share those views? What if I had a belief that psychotherapy was the work of the devil? Would that give me the right to picket and shout hateful slogans at people going to a psychologist's office? Because that's your unproven ideology. That would be your perception of what is, but it's not proven. But Republicans do that all the time. Yeah, okay. they, they, their, per, their perception is and every, everything is gay, gays fall, and the black man in the White House fall. And they want the government to force those views upon people. And they want people. taxpayers' money to pay for See, this unproven ideology. That's when they like government. But they don't like government to make regulations on business or to raise taxes on the rich or stuff like that. Hey, can I say then the word? Then they want small government. Can I say the word hypocrites? You can say it, but the supporters don't get it. Uh, therein lies the problem. It doesn't take much intelligence, really, to see through the bullshit. 
How dare some people use the law to intimidate women who do not share their beliefs? I agree. It's just like the uh, the right to lifers. Uh, they think a fertilized egg is a human baby. A fertilized chicken egg is not a chicken, right? right. So why would a fertilized human egg be a human? Because they say so. Because they say so. Right. They say so. And they believe they're doing God's work. It's just like uh, I was watching Ancient Aliens last huh. night and the uh, the some of the southwestern Indians um, that lived out in the boonies, they when they first saw a, a jet aircraft flying, you know, uh, to and from a, a U.S. Air Force base, they thought it was the fabled Thunderbird. Thunderbird, I was going to say. It they wor they worshipped it. Hey, they might have been the fa famous Thunderbirds. They will be... Uh, the uh, aerial uh, team. Yeah, right. they will be displaying their... Uh, oh, uh, they're great. Their, Na uh, naval, the naval pilots. Yeah. Oh, they're fabulous. They will be, uh, you know... But you, you see what I mean by perception? Memorial Day. Perception, you know, like uh, ancient primitive people on in this like in the South Pacific, they might have seen a an erupting volcano as an angry god. They did. And they and they felt that they needed to make a sacrifice to appease. They threw in all virgins, didn't they? The god, and, and the Aztecs and Mayans did the same thing. Yeah. It's always some poor young maiden that was sacrificed. A woman. Well, yeah, men men must sacrifice sacrifice too, you know. Never heard of that. But Lower classes have always been sacrificial. Yeah. Well, I guess Hollywood always showed the uh, the young female because that's they correct. wanted you to see the young female. That's correct. And she was always scantily clad. That's correct. Scantily clad. Okay. That's it is correct. now time. That's correct. For the Reverend Doctor William J. Eisenman's gastronomic delight, known as lunch. That's uh, correct. Lunch break. We will now go to the. Uh, Bible a verse segment of uh, how to defeat a conservative. Simply uh, hit the pause button, read and learn. Followed by our voiceover artist, Mr. William Hamilton Morrow III, with his words of wisdom and promo. And we'll be back with the balance of our show. Cool. Memorial Day weekend, 2015. This is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com.
Hey, listen, for the real hard-hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you very much, William H. Morrow III, William Hamilton Morrow III, for your promo and uh, words of wisdom. We are back with the balance of our show. It happens to be Memorial Day weekend 2015. Enjoy, but most of all, be safe. I would like to. Uh, um, I would like to salute a wonderful thing I, I, I've seen on the internet uh, with beautiful photos, a, a fantastic invention, part of the green movement. It is an offshore floating solar greenhouse for producing vegetables, plants, you know, food production offshore. Beautiful. I mean, you know, I just love science. You gotta love science when it's not oppressed and sabotaged. Gotta love it. Who would do that? Who would sabotage science? Uh, corporatist individuals, greedy uh, capitalists, crony capitalists. What about would Republicans? Republicans? That's what I'm trying to get at. They don't believe in science. They don't believe in science. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, man, we're the, this is the, we're the only show, we're the only organization to give you the real truth about capitalism in a conch shell. Capitalism in a conch shell. It's not rocket science. It's just the natural, sinful, evil nature of humans. The inherent evil in humans. And if you can't understand what we're trying to tell you, then you are severely brain cell deficient and most likely a teabagger from way out yonder in dim dar uh, red states of murka. Like, uh, I talked about that pastor already in Florida with the pythons. I mentioned that at the beginning mm -hmm. of the show, didn't I? Right. Yes. But uh, I also would like to give a salute of happiness that I hear uh, McDonald's and Monsanto stock are tanking. <laughs> Very happy to hear that. I I'm also happy that, you know, the Republican clown bus is getting more ridiculous by the week. That's happy news. And of course, of course, I want to give greetings to my near dear friend in Osaka, Japan, Miho, and to all my Facebook group administrators, Mr. Sash Boyle, Joe Stebbins, Jean-Luc Odon, Anthony Laura, Justin Dana Spears, Jay Cruz, greetings, and K uh, Ken Thies and KT Training to Win, Akari USA, former WWE star, my friend in Boca Raton, Florida, Mr. Ken Thiessen. All right. And, um, let's see, who else is, um, and of course, greetings to Jesse Ventura and what he's doing on Aura TV and most of all, greetings to uh, Senator Bernie Sanders. You're off to a very wonderful, powerful start. And um, the uh, president of Long Beach Kettlebell Club, Mr. Uh, Eric Doyle. I give greetings to Mr. Eric Doyle. And his many great physical fitness events at his club Alternative Fitness at its finest, Mr. Eric Doyle, Doyle Long Beach, California. Okay. Um, 
salute them. I give you salute with the lucky shillelagh. All right. Comments. I thought you had something on the clipboard there. Well, I was writing something, but not not oh. something to say. Something of importance, but not something that needed to be said. That hasn't already been uh -uh. said. Okie dokie. Um, what am I doing? Oh. I need to make a confession. Although I'm happily married, I have a huge crush on a looker named Alice. A looker. And it's the government's fault. He's not blaming Obama? Alice probably doesn't even know I exist. Most likely not. <laughs> but I've been spying on her uh, with my binoculars. Oh, he's a stalker. And telescope for several years. He's a peeping Tom and a stalker. And I don't mean he's chasing her with a stalker celery. I know where she lives. Midfield Park, New Jersey. Hey! I go to... Oh, hey. come on! That was Beelzebub's fault. I go to grab my levity bells and I'm knocking everything off the desk. Stalker celery. He's a stalker. And Damn. when time allows, I watch her. <laughs> as she leaves and returns home, I watch her eat. She loves sushi. He knows that? He's zeroing it? Oh, he disguised. This is creepy. I've even watched her groom herself. Oh, now we're in getting... In the morning. Now we're getting creepy. He's going to get yelled at and scolded by the, the dear... The Amy Dickinson or the dear Abby or whatever the hell this is. I also found out where Alice is from. Oh, boy. She's an uptown girl. Uptown girl. Was that Billy Joel? Billy Joel. From Manhattan. <laughs> and she just seems to get more beautiful every time I watch her. This is not going to end good. Before anyone gets totally creeped out, I should probably mention that Alice is a bald eagle. <laughs> you fucking... You totally threw me off, man. You, you're a rascal, you. Uh, so I take back everything I said about Stalker and Peeping Tom and perverts. Uh, Named for Alice Lurick, the Ramsey photographer who took several wonderful digital images of the regal raptor flying over Overpeck Creek back in 2010. I thought you were going to say Alice Cramden. Or Alice Cooper. When photographer Alice examined her pictures, she saw that the eagle bad had a, an antenna on its back. The sure sign of a transmitter. She also discovered that the eagle was banded. Mm -hmm. In those days, I wrote the Meadowlands Commission's nature blog, and seeing a bald eagle was still a big deal. Eagle, osprey, and peregrine, falcon, populations had plummeted over the past century because of trigger-happy humans. Yeah, there seems to be a lot of trigger-happy humans as of late, especially spoiled, rich scumbags like that son of an oil tycoon who killed a black rhino, who ha which happens to be on the extinct list for money paid a few hundred thousand dollars to be allowed to shoot the black rhino yeah the, the humans saw eagles as nuisances or easy targets the destruction of habitats and willy-nilly use of DDT and other chemicals by 2010 however these raptors had made an amazing comeback. Mostly for one major reason. Our government has protected and nurtured them. Well, that's what should happen when 
an animal is on the endangered species list. Without that intervention, they would have disappeared from New Jersey a long time ago. You know, all you rich, spoiled bastards out there, you, you scum, for killing, for going big game hunting, and, 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 and not, and killing an endangered animal without having a, um, an even playing field, you know, having a great advantage with a high-powered rifle, you really are the lowest of the low lives. You know, I just because, had to say that. And because Alice, the eagle, was banded, I could track down where she was from, the Inwood section of Manhattan, where she had been banded as a nestling in 2004. Yeah, I believe they have, uh, they have uh, human uh, man-made homes for the peregrine falcons on the rooftops of New York City skyscrapers, because there they were they were, or maybe they still are, endangered. And darned if Alice didn't stick around Overpeck. Overpeck Park is in, like, the Ridgefield area, Ridgefield, Ridgefield Park, Leonia, you know, like, these. Are, this is the suburb of New York City and New Jersey. That was the start of my unrequited love. Well, you know what? It's okay, then. Never I, mind that Alice, the eagle, was already in a committed relationship. Yeah. I was smitten. Alice and her mate soon built a nest in Ridgefield Park. Everyone could tell which one was Alice. We could see the transmitter and the antenna. They fledged too young. Really? In 2011, 2012, and 2013. You know, this is really exciting for bird watchers. To be honest with you, I would be excited. I'm not a bird. I'm a bird lover, but I'm not. It's not my hobby. But to see it, see to watch them in person in my area, I, it's exciting. And observers have counted three young heads. In the nest oh, this cute. spring. American bald eagles, huh? You gotta love it. Of course, yeah. I mean, like, I have hawks. Could be red-tailed hawks. I have hawks. Uh, that's that's old hat. You know, in in my across the street from me. But bald eagles. What a difference five years make. They're making a comeback. Between the time that Alice was first photographed in 2010 and now. Mm. Bald eagle sightings in North Jersey have become increasingly commonplace. And more nests are being reported. From along the Palisades to waterfront property in Wayne. Alice, alas, could have done a better job selecting a neat tree for her nest. The tree is located on a contaminated site, being remediated as part of an ambitious multi-use development plan. What's more, thanks to Overpeck Park's ever-growing popularity, Overpeck Creek near the Eagle's Nest has gone from backwater to thoroughfare for crew teams and kayakers. Yeah, now you see what regulations and conservation does for the planet. You know, it cleans the water, and it, 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 it brings back wildlife. The flora and the fauna, you know, uh, you could take your children to a park and they can actually see nature in action. I mean, I think that's fantastic. Isn't that better than polluting air, the, the, our planet? It interferes with the freedom of business. To but do what they want. How much money is enough for the top 20% of the world? Obviously not enough. So we should sacrifice, everyone else should sacrifice. Oh yes, keep so, doing it. So the top 20 or 1% can have more and more and more money. Sacrifice everything. Sacrifice the beauty of nature. Sacrifice the our, our pure water. Uh, um, Air, and clean, we all clean say air. fracking. 
fracking, fracking is still, oh, I'm glad you brought that up. Fracking is still being done in California. Uh, uh, the bottling of fresh water is still being done by the Nestle's Corporation. It is being allowed all in a state of permanent drought, permanent drought that is destroying California's agricultural industry, industry, destroying their industry. And guess who's governor of California? The famous moonbeam progressive liberal Jerry Brown is allowing all this to happen. Shame on you, Jerry Brown. You're a disgrace. Shame on you. Shame, 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 in the words of Sean Morrison. Under these trying circumstances, how long the Eagles will remain in Ridgefield Park after this nesting season is up in the air. That's why it's crucial that humans give them as much breathing room as possible. After all, bald eagles have become more than our nation's symbol. In North Jersey, they are also our neighbors. Well, that's a very nice uh, reading for Memorial Day weekend. I think so. It's very applicable. It's very positive and very pleasant. It's, and, you know, it's nice to, to give some positivity once in a while in a very corrupt and evil world. Um, so. The zany tax plans presented by House Republicans and GOP presidential candidates, including Governor Christie, defy all logic. What was I saying before about logic? These proposals would cut taxes for the wealthiest Americans and leave the middle class footing the bills for America. What else is new? Oh, but it, it's a, are they still uh, telling people about trickle-down economics? The House plan would replace the tax structure with two brackets. Christie would have three brackets. The top rate of 39.6% would be cut to 35% under the House Republicans' plan and to 28% under Christie's plan. Results, re results indicate that there would be a decrease of $4.5 trillion in revenue over the next 10 years. And the real losers would be the middle class. While there would be some money for those households earning a hundred thousand to two hundred thousand dollars a year, those savings would be offset by eliminating major deductions now in place for the middle class. The real winners would be millionaires who could see a windfall of more than three hundred thousand dollars per year. The only winners will be the the rich. The governor oh. yeah. also wants to tinker with Social Security. Yeah, they want to steal your Social Security money that belongs to you, not them, not the government, and they want to steal it and, and pocket it and give it to their rich friends. Listen, the American dream and capitalism only helps the rich. It was only meant to help the rich although that should not happen. Instead of cutting people off Social Security, how about making it solvent by not raiding payroll taxes? I'm getting some words of wisdom from King Neptune of the, of the Seven Seas. He agrees. Capitalism in a conch shell, crony capitalism, the American dream was only meant to benefit the rich. What's that? What's that, Neptune? Or if you're Greek, Poseidon? Is that Wi-Fi or, or uh, um, cellular? Electromagnetic um, energy. Or, uh, or what's it called? Organ or argon? Organ. Organ energy. Argon is a gas. 
Well, Chris Christie has plenty of that. Yeah, well. Plenty of gas in that, in that uh, colon. <laughs> and coming out of his mouth. We had an in, in, in incident in uh, New Jersey where they broke up a dog fighting ring and they took two of the dogs to one of the shelters. Cruelty for profit. And when they were in the shelter, someone stole them. Came in and stole them. I, re I read the article. Yeah. Patterson was. So, it? Patterson, I think. Why can't the powers that be in Patterson protect the city's human and animal population? Because uh, on a local level, especially in these. Uh, these inner city, these cities that are that are considered poor or or that have, are predominantly ghetto. Crony capitalism is alive and well, and the uh, political system in places like um, Patterson, just like with Atlantic City, Camden, New Jersey, Hudson County, there's a lot of corruption there, and the people don't care. They're just stuffing their pockets with your tax dollars. The recent case in point is the theft of two pit bulls that were rescued from a diabolical dog fighting ring. They're all diabolical. In 2007, two other dogs were also stolen after being rescued and were never found. What I would like to know is what was done to prevent this 2007 tragedy from occurring again. Isn't there a state law against uh, dog fights or federal law? Yeah. Why aren't, if Patterson is um, allowing certain things, why isn't the state coming in and, you know, the, I, Well, the dog fighting is done in secret. But if the, but if the city, the city doesn't know about is it. not doing anything, well, this is what the question is from this person here. Yeah. It, it, it happened in 2007 also. What was done to protect it from happening again? Obviously nothing. Because it did happen again. Was there an alarm system installed that connected to the police? Why weren't other protective measures taken? Why weren't the per per perpetrators of this recent crime not already in jail? I'll give you an answer, you're not going to like it. The mayors, predominantly the mayors of Patterson, just like the mayors of all these other poor uh, uh, high crime cities, happen to be minority. You know, uh, black, uh, uh, they've been black in Patterson and now, now there's a Hispanic mayor. And uh, just like David Dinkins in the past in New York City, they don't want to hassle they don't want to ruffle the feathers and hassle the brothers. That's basically it. Is the indifference and apathy in Patterson such that it allows and perpetrates animal abuse? Officials in Patterson need to wake up. Yeah, under David Dinkins, you, you had squeegee, aggressive panhandlers, squeegee people all over the place, every street corner. They you wouldn't don't, have them, though, they, if... They don't want a clean house, and then when, you know, I know I'm not a fan of his. Believe me, I'm not. But when Giuliani came in with his police commissioners, he cleaned up the streets. No, he did like Reagan. He oh, put them elsewhere. That's all. No, they went... Like el Reagan. They went elsewhere. No, Reagan freed them from the nut houses, and they went onto the street. Now, when Giuliani he, stopped them He from cleaned the streets clean the streets, now they're somewhere else. They didn't disappear. They just, and they didn't rise up into the 1%. They just mosey on somewhere else. You know? Yeah. They mosey alone. Well, that's what uh, many of these uh, cities, what, were like 35 cities or something that you can't yeah. feed the homeless? It's insane. That's what they want. To, that'll move them out. There were... In, that'll move them out. In South Florida... They Let were, them become someone else's they, problem. They were arresting... A, a, a pastor, a 90-year-old pastor yeah. from feeding the homeless. Yeah. 
A man in a cloth couldn't even feed the homeless. That's what they want to with do. That, with they, that, they want to get him out of their town. With that penis head, uh, he looks like a, a, a dildo with uh, two legs and two arms. Uh, uh, um, Rick, what's it? Rick Scott. Rick Scott. Governor Rick Scott, Republican Governor Rick Scott of Florida. Dickhead, Scott. All right, we got time for one more, I think. Democratic presidential candidate Bernie Sanders will introduce legislation on Tuesday to make college tuition free in yes. the United States. Yes, yes, and the best news of all, by taxing Wall Street. Yes, sir. We live in a highly competitive global economy and if our economy is to be strong, we need the best educated workforce in the world. Yeah, but yeah, but you, you need a job market. <laughs> you need jobs to stay in, in America in order to for this educated workforce to find this gameful employment with benefits. And guess what? What? To do that, you need regulation to stop the companies from shipping the jobs overseas creating products over there and then wanting to import them export them back to the United States hey. where they can sell them listen you must stop that cycle absolutely and guess what India has college graduates all over the place there are a dime a dozen and they're and they're and they're sweeping the sweeping the streets and you know and they're, and they're and there's poverty galore, so big deal, you know having all these educated people running around doesn't suddenly make the country better if there is no jobs to be had, yeah. but Republicans seem to like to tell people that there are plenty of jobs. Yeah, you're ju you're just job. too lazy to work. You see, there must be plenty of jobs because I know this person who happens to be on uh, welfare. Right. Was it Harold? Probably. But anyway, he, uh, he's he got to have, uh, or visit, or uh, contact, or whatever, like, well, what, seven, seven job I interviews and whatever a day? A per work day, not counting Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, in order to get his social services, he's got to... He's got to show that he's he he is actively looking. He has applied seven. First they tell him three, then they tell Harold seven, and and um, on top of that, you know, in order cash assistance and food stamps and the Medicaid card, he's got to do this. To me, it's like a punishment and persecution well, of, of the poor. And then another gentleman, uh, not Harold. Uh, I think his name was Steve from Morris County, New Jersey. And he, in order for him to get his, I don't know what the hell he has, because I didn't think there was any funding anymore for Section 8 rent subsidy. But yes, there is. There is still. Anyway, he's getting rent subsidy. Okay, he knew somebody, you know, who knew somebody, who knew somebody. So he got he got to the top of the list, waiting list. He got it. He's got to put down, like, every so often that he's still looking for a cheaper apartment. You know, like mm -hmm. like four searches of, for every period. How the hell in Bergen County, New Jersey, I mean, Morris in northern New Jersey, in this day and age, how are you going to find cheaper rent than a studio <laughs> garden apartment he lives in? Where is he going to find cheaper rent? You want this this nice, white, well-educated, smart gentleman to live in, in a ghetto with crack houses at every corner? Absolutely. They Absolutely. don't give a... They, look, why don't they just come clean? Why, don't, why doesn't the Republicans just say, we want you to die, we don't care about the poor, please die, you know, and just get it over with. Come clean. You know... It's punishment and persecution of the poor. Well, because Republicans have this actually uh, a conscious or unconscious idea of job as punishment. 
a they, job is a punishment. But just like so, you should go out there every day and just sacrifice everything you are and everything to get that job. And they don't. No care. matter how menial, I don't care what it is. And they don't care if you like the job or not. That, well, that's your side. That happy, happiness is not their concern. That's correct. But their happiness is of of their concern. Yes, it is. They will tell you. In a conch shell, they capital. will tell you. And Rand Paul did. He tried to tell uh, Bernie Sanders uh, uh, when they had the little tiff that uh, the, uh, the Constitution, you know, guarantees, guarantees life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, not happiness itself. You see? Yeah, the pursuit. The prosciutto. The prosciutto of, of happiness. happiness. Yes, yes. Capitalism in a conch shell, people. Capitalism in a conch shell. And I bet Bernie Sanders will tell off everybody he debates very well. Go Bernie. Prosciutto. You know what the Republicans will be saying? Now I'm hungry. The he's prosciutto. arrogant. He's arrogant. They're say he's an arrogant, obnoxious right. so socialist. Yeah, but it's okay for Republicans to be arrogant. Yes. And that, obnoxious. Yes, that's true. That's true. They that, love, that I'm is sure overlooked. To, I'm sure they 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 love Chris Christie's uh, gas bag, uh, blowhorn. That will not happen if every year hundreds of thousands of bright young people cannot afford to go to college. And if millions more leave school deeply in debt, the Vermont senator said in a statement released on Sunday, the plan would provide tuition-free higher education to students at four-year colleges. The statement said and is modeled after the way many European nations handle there you go. the Scan cost of Scandinavian cost. countries, health care and education are rights, not privileges. You know, the only right we have in America is I, the right to go shopping. The, the right to, to right to go shopping. That's right. Yeah. Of course, big business and the oligarchs have all the rights they want. You know what I mean? And a few that they'll just dig up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Countries like Germany, Denmark, Sweden, and many more are providing free or inexpensive higher education for their young people. That's right. Sanders said. And if you're a tourist, uh, you can get the free health care and uh, maybe uh, even yes, go to school. Uh, yes, yes. If you're just visiting. I don't know about that, but... There's they so, understand. Yeah, I'm sorry. There's they understand. Yeah. How important it is to be investing in their youth. We should be doing the same. You, 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 yeah. Y o o o t, like the uh, um, Joe Pesci in the um, in that movie, uh, My Cousin Vinny. Right. Two youths. Sanders said that his bill will also seek to substantially lower student debts bring down interest rates on college loans. The bill could put added pressure on Democratic frontrunner Hillary Clinton. Yeah, well, the billaries are corporatists. Who has yet to release her plan for higher education. <laughs> A few weeks ago, campaign manager Robbie Mook used the phrase debt-free college. Nobody should have to pay out of pocket for school or to see a doctor. When Period. Discussing, Period. When discussing the issues important to young people. But uh, Clinton excuse me. has not yet said whether that would be part of her plan. That Hillary, that little rascal, she's got her hand open for money. President Obama continues to try to drum up congressional support for his plan to make community college tuition free. Not enough. Not all public colleges should be tuition free. State colleges, community colleges. Education itself. Period. Education Period. itself. This concept of of not even not even being able to pay off your student loan in your lifetime. This astronomical tuition cost to go to a good school has to stop. 
I want to lower the cost of community college to zero, Obama said. We can't afford to let striving Americans be priced out of the education they need to get ahead. And Barack Obama and Bernie Sanders should constantly mention how successful and how great things are going on in Scandinavian countries in regards to everything. Quality of life, standard of living, happiness, the prosciutto, the prosciutto of happiness. Uh, the, no, the, in, in the, those uh, countries, you free, actually, you actually get happiness. You right. don't just pursue it. And contentment. You get it. Yeah. And, you, and, and contentment. And, and nobody retires living in poverty. Yeah. Over there. Even no. their social service program is is uh, um, compassionate and, and, and decent because and it adequate. Has, it has a bit of dignity to it. Right. And Scandinavian countries, education and health care are free like they should be. So Bernie Sanders and, and Barack Obama should mention the Scandinavian countries. You see, Barack Obama... But this country he, is the exception. We are exceptional. Barack Obama, oh shit. Barack Obama is at an, an advantage now. He already won his uh, re-election. His last term is almost over. Barack Obama can hammer the conservatives with everything he's got. He could say anything he wants. He could veto anything he wants. He can executive order anything he wants. He can lower the boom. He can go in front of the media, in front of the whole country, and expose the whole lot of them. What are they going to do? Impeach him? His term is almost over. His second term is almost over. He has nothing to lose. But he's still going out there for halfway measures, like this one with the community college. Because there's something going on here, folks, with the two-party system. Because he wants something, and they're not going to give him anything. So he thinks if he can go halfway with them, they'll give him something. So you have a feeling even Barack Obama, maybe he thinks he's not rich enough? Oh, I don't know. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with getting things done. Yeah, no, going, this, this, this whole compromise. See, there you go again with this bipartisanship compromising. This That's what he's doing. That's what I'm saying. It's crap. It's crap. Because every time you well, what are you going to do when the other thing is in charge? You executive order and veto the hell out of them. That's what you do. Veto, well, veto, it, veto, veto. You executive. don't have to veto because whatever they're doing, it ain't making it through the Senate. They don't want to compromise with uh, progressives at all. No kidding. So you know what it's like? It's like a union contract. You notice every time, every year that goes by, the new employees that get hired get less and less and less and less. Yes. Like with the like Bingo. with like with, with hap what's happening with a lot of uh, companies where you know when they re renegotiate the new contract for the year, the cool. employees are getting less and less because and less. Because they have the power today. Who has the power? The companies. Why are the companies muscle? Unions are disdained. Why are the companies able to bitch slap the unions? The unions because the unions they used to be thirty seven percent of places were unionized. I think it's down to like seven percent today. You mean they just don't have the population? They don't have the power. Well then, who, what makes power? To having the people, right? Organization, yeah. The population. They don't have the volume. The propaganda has taught the people to be against unions. Because the people are believing <coughs> the, the Republican bullshit yes. that the media keeps on kowtowing to because the progressives are not getting any face time in today's lying, lamestream American media. And because all they all hear, they hear nobody holds them accountable. Nobody rebuttals them. The mainstream media only shows you the ridiculous Republican rants, but they never show you anyone else. Because they don't have to anymore since Ronald Reagan took away the fairness. I mean, doctrine. I'm sure Senator Al Franken and Senator uh, uh, Elizabeth Warren have plenty to say, but nobody is sticking a camera and a microphone in yes, front of them. Correct. You don't see it. The What's media, the, 
so, what, but the point with the unions right. and etc. Right. is the fact that the the oligarchs and the corporations have got this propaganda sold to the people to hate the unions yeah. and, and I, to to yeah. to uh, hate the government. I don't. Yeah, everything. Big government is always to blame for everything. They That's they never right. talk about big business and corporations no. and corporate CEOs being to blame. No. It's always big government. Even libertarians blame big government. No. Hey, what what happened to this uh, concept of the liberal media? I haven't seen it. It didn't exist. That was a, an old wives' tale. A, a, a fallacy. Another right wing called propaganda. Yeah. Believed by a lot of people. Unfortunately, hook, line, and sinker, the lemmings are going off the cliff into the sea of despair. Thank you for joining us. Wait. Huh? Wait. Oh, there's more? We have to leave on an up note. Well, I got to go to the men's room again. So, you. Oh, you mean one of those light readings? That's correct. Ah, fuck. <laughs> the prosciutto of happiness. Uh, I have a question about how to handle a situation. With one of my grandsons. Uh oh. Rory came to me recently to talk about religion. His mother is a Christian. I am not. He asked what I thought about his mother, forcing him to go to church. He has many doubts about Christianity. I tried to understand Christianity for more than 50 years. And about 20 years ago, I found peace with the faith. I now practice. My daughter doesn't want me to talk to her children about my path. My question is, how do I address this issue with my grandson without confusing him even more? Any help would be appreciated because I don't want to go against his mother's wishes. Answer your grandson's question honestly. He asked you what you thought about his being forced to go to church. He did not ask you how you found your peace, or if you did. Sooner or later, he will find his own peace, and probably the same way you did, by searching for it. Do not push him or pull him in any direction. And keep the peace with his mother. Oh God, I That's missed it. I missed it. You missed it. All I have to say is, as far as religion goes, let the kid um, decide. Let the kid, um, like, let's say the mother is, uh, let's say it's an interfaith relationship, marriage, and there's a child. Let the child learn about the, the two religions. Let the child make his own decision, question everything. Like George Carlin used to say, the late, great George Carlin, question everything, uh, study, research on your own, be an uh, independent, free, critical thinker with an open mind, and let the kid decide what he wants. It's, it's not you to force well, it on him because re religion hasn't been proven. It's an ideology. It's unproven. It's not based on facts. So let the kid decide what he wants to do. Don't pressure him. It's like don't. Well, that's don't, why they say it's a belief. It's like don't pressure the kid to learn <coughs> how to play a piano because he's going to hate the instrument. Don't fall, <gasps> don't smack him. Don't get a ruler and hit him on the knuckles while he's trying to learn. He's going to hate you. He's going to hate the instrument. Same thing with religion. Let the daughter or son decide on their own. And, uh, and and everything will be fine. Um, and furthermore, I always thought Rory was a stupid name. ISIS doesn't do that. I think Rory Calhoun was an actor named Rory Calhoun. Yes, he Cal was. Rory! Roar, what is he? Roar? Was he a freaking lion? Roar. Yeah, no, no. Well, ISIS is, is considered a right-wing, zealot, fanatical cult. But it's a religion. Cult. It's a religion. And well, they say religion. They force the people into it. Yeah, Much like, like Roman Catholics did. During the Inquisition. Uh, they probably still do it today, who knows. Converting by the sword. Because they want the, you know anybody in the family to become Roman yeah, Catholic. Uh, like the, uh, the conquistadors, uh, Cortez and, and Pizarro. They you forced know, the they, Indians. They had a representative from the Catholic Church with them and they 
they she brought along the Bible. They forced and the cross. They it was they forced their religion on them or mm -hmm. else. And they of course as they were doing this they were stealing everything Ooh. they could find from the Indians. It was Ooh. taken they were I think they were there because they found out about the gold. Well of course. They were there for the gold. The the the, the representative of the Vatican uh, the popes back then, they weren't exactly nice religious people. <laughs> they were, they were like, they, never were. they were like corporate CEOs today. They're greedy. They, they heard about gold, and they, they stole everything from the, they stole the land. They stole the gold. They, look. Well, remember Martin Luther got pissed off at the church because the church was selling indulgences. Yeah, forgiveness. Of sin for what? For moolah. Yeah. Well, the United States is an offspring of the British Empire, right? They yes. are. Uh, we, they are Ephraim, and we are Manasseh. Yes. This uh, modern-day descendants from the some of the lost tribes of of ancient Israel. The white, the European uh, uh, mentality, the Ephraim and Manasseh mentality seems to be the same uh, 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 pillage and plunder and, and divide and conquer and and steal the uh, resources from everyone else and, and well that has always been the colonial and way of doing business and if you're a person of color you are looked upon as a savage down by, there by this uh, people of color yeah women yeah. they are down there now, isn't that what the caste system in India is? Yes. Like you were born, you were born into this family, and Brahmin, this, fam and this family there, happened yeah. to be poor, oh. so you cannot fraternize with, or date, or marry with any. If the girl was in 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 a higher caste, you were not allowed to go to break out of your caste. See a. S T E. Yeah, not C A S T. No, it was like or a, a broken leg. Yeah, it was yeah. like it was a form of elitism, wasn't it? Well, it is. Yes, of course. Elite. It's kind of like um, if you, even if they know you, if you like um, try to contact, let's say on Facebook or on, you know on um, internet, you try to contact the person who is in the spotlight in any way, shape, or form. They happen to be a sport, an athlete. Or a model, or an actor, or an actress, an entertainer. A uh, 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 thank you, lucky stars, if they send you two words back. They it's, might give you an autograph. Well, they or they might not. They want you to buy their eight by ten. Well, yeah. Or yeah, you know, like these. Um, this. Um, uh, uh, this pro a female professional wrestler that every every conversation quickly ended with you're gonna buy my pictures my pictures and then the female bodybuilder uh, very arrogant uh, from she's from Scandinavia yeah. Sophie Arverbrink uh -huh. uh, she uh, wanted me she was nagging me to sell her nutritional supplements so in other words they are in the spotlight I'm not saying it's only women, but because women have egos too, they get all blown out of proportion when when they get attention. I mean, guys, I guess guys could be that way. I mean, I'm, I'm not I'm not a shrink, but I notice women are more susceptible to it. But you know, let's say it's equal, men and women. As soon as they're in the spotlight, they have this mentality of elitism about them, where they are better than you. They're better than you because they Absolutely. are a celebrated person and you are not. You could be, let's say, you're homeless. Mm. Or let's say you're just a po folk. Mm. But you have, um, and let's say you have a master's degree. Let's say you have a pretty darn good resume. Let's say you have a great sense of humor, a personality, mm -hmm. and you're very highly intelligent. Mm -hmm. You are still a mm -hmm. a mark, like professional wrestlers call the fans that buy the tickets. They call them marks. You are still a nobody because they 
are in the spotlight. They are a somebody. Well, doesn't that go all, all the way back to the Barkers of old? Bob Barker from The Price is Right? The Barkers da, da, at the da, carnivals da, da, and da, da, the circuses. Oh, the, the carnies. Yeah, but everybody that they were trying to get to buy a ticket were Mark. That's where the word mark. They were suckers. I think that's where the term mark came from. It's yeah. a, it's a it's like it's a sucker. Yeah, sucker. Yeah, they 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 talk about you, man. The pro wrestling industry, they talk about the fans this way, and they of make course. fun of you. So you are a mark, but it's not just pro wrestling. It's anybody, anyone who's in a spotlight who is considered an entertainer. Right. They're better than you because they're in a the spotlight. Yeah. Anyway, have a safe and happy. Uh, um, most of all, safe Memorial Day. Uh, you know, and I hope you can get into the water. Memorial Day weekend. I don't think too many people are going to be swimming into this icy cold water. Not today, but in, maybe tomorrow. In the Jersey Shore, because the water is still. I is, think it's in the 50s. It is very, very yeah. cold. Yeah. I don't care if it's 80 degrees on the beach. Ah. It's very cold in the water, number one. Number two, the Jersey Shore is an absolute 100% rip-off scam. Uh. I've talked about it in the past. And number three, there happens to be this particular very large, rotund, great white shark that has been swimming up and down the Jersey Shore coast. I think there's two of them. <laughs> there's two there's of something them. Mary is one of them. Yeah, now, yeah. great whites, unfortunately have a couple of bad habits aside from, biting you. Aside, from, aside from the fact that anything that moves is food to them they um, they they're not afraid to come into more shallow waters even if they're three thousand pounds they, they will you know venture if they know food is there and number two instead of being courteous and and circle you so you can see the shark fin they have a habit of coming up from underneath ah. and crashing out of the water and grabbing you from underneath the way they hunt seals. Yikes. Yeah, so there's a lot of, they're, they're not stupid fish. Usually a creature that gets that big in the ocean is usually, they didn't get that way by being dumb. You know, they're usually the smartest of the species when they, if they live long enough to get that big. Anyway, have a good one. Uh, say so, so long and, uh, and give some best wishes, wishes to these uh, jabronis out there. So long, best wishes to right. all the jabronis. Right, and I will... And to the Gavones too. And the Gavones, all the Gavones, like the conservative Cavon Chris Christie, <laughs> all beginning with the letter C, Conservative, Cavone, Chris Christie. If you want to throw in Crisco and Krispy Kreme, you can do that too. But I, I have some very nice uh, Polish uh, bloodwurst called Kashanka, as well as freshly made kielbasa that will, I'm sure, will be excellent on the uh, natural wood burning grill. Gorilla. Ha have the Gorilla Grill. Gorilla, my dreams. Ha 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 ha. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.